Well, you guys, welcome back. Episode two of uh, God's Big Toe podcast. Episode two. We're, Episode. Ma- we're making this official. We're, we're making this it official. Really is it's crazy. What's going on? But I'm Gabe McLaughlin. I'm Noah Amenhauser. And we're ready to get this rolling. So uh, let's go. We'll, we'll open this up with prayer, um, you know, as we always do. So let's get it going. You got us? Yes, sir. Dear Lord, uh, we just want to thank you for just uh, everyone that's here watching, every viewer that is, uh, you know, listening and uh, watching this podcast. We just pray that you're you're here in the midst of our words, where you're here in uh, every moment of this, and that your presence just fills this room. And we pray that uh, you know our listeners can have open hearts that they can hear, and um, really just we pray that this impacts people, and most of all, just shines your light. And so we just pray that, and. Uh, we just want to do this for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, awesome. Right. So you want to jump in? You want to... Okay, so before we were like even starting this, we were talking about who we played against. Just as like, just basketball players who we played against. And we'll hold on. We'll hold on. We got to do that in okay. the middle. We okay. got to okay. give... Okay. Middle, 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 middle. So Sorry. we'll have... Yeah, we got to do that in the middle. Okay. Okay. Just because... Okay, okay. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and find them. <laughs> we got to... Right. I mean, we could do it now if you want. No. We'll all right, all right. You're running it now. Well... Okay, we'll give you a synopsis of what we're going to go over really quickly. We got some big news that I was talking about early on in the first episode that I've been uh, waiting to even share to Noah about the amazing things that uh, God has been doing. So I'm excited. I'm super excited. That'll be cool. He's been like a little kid about it. He's like, no, I got big news. I got big news. Oh, I'm ready. I'm excited for it. So this is like two weeks past, like when we first, two, three weeks when we first filmed that first episode and so I'm surprised you kept it in this was, <laughs> it's been the hardest thing I'll be honest um but then we also have other nuggets for you I mean uh we'll go over what's been happening in our season and then also how God's been working through that and even just how we feel sometimes in the midst of those moments that have a little bit of struggle and um the mindset through the storm the mindset through the storm I like that uh, that's good uh, it's right. good and then um no, we'll lead this one, but just talking about, you know. Kind of with the mindset thing, man, the whole, like, Jesus being crucified has kind of been on my heart recently, especially going through, like, the rough patches that we've been going through. And I was like, I don't, like, Jesus is the whole crucifixion process. I think it's talked about, but not, like, in depth. And so I was like, that's been on my heart to talk about. So mm-hmm. I was like, we need to go over that a little bit. No, seriously. And then the fun part Noah was talking about, where we'll put this just randomly in the middle of it um, as a little break whenever it just comes in, is uh, just who who was our best player we ever played against and just the people we played against, you know? Um, so, yeah, but anyways, we'll dive into it. So, first topic of discussion is... Uh, oh, I had it on my phone. I forgot to write it down. Hang on. <laughs> Give me a moment. Quick intermission, right? Hey, maybe we should take a break. From what, this episode? It's getting pretty good. I was thinking, maybe we should talk about our sponsors. Scott and Jen Thone at Thone Home Real Estate Company. I can always talk about them. Yeah. Have you noticed that the interest rates are dropping? Scott and Jen believe that it will continue to drop, and now is the perfect time to buy. Plus, if you buy now, there are plenty of houses to choose from at affordable prices. And if you wait too long, it can be very difficult to buy a house if you're not a cash buyer. And as housing inventory decreases, prices will increase. It's a, it's a simple matter of supply and demand. And Scott and Jen are experienced award-winning realtors that believe in what experts call renting your rate. Which is simply buying a home you want now when the supply is greater and the prices are affordable. And then refinancing in six months to a year when rates go even lower. Using this strategy means you don't have to time the market perfectly. Which is kind of like trying to hold your breath for two and a half minutes and punch your way out of the stomach of an orca. Probably not going to happen. All right. And if you need to sell your home, they can help you with that as well. They have different strategies to make sure you get top dollar for your property. If you're looking to buy or sell your property, give Scott and Jen a call at 602-581-SOLD. That is 602-581-7653. Or... Just go to their website at www.thonehome.com. And again, thank you, Thone Home. Thank you. Intermission to start. Intermission to start. Like two minutes in. So, um, kind of what's been going on this week, even just the past couple weeks. So, our team has been 
unbelievably, uh, just had some unbelievable moments and just being blessed and just, dude, we've had a really, really fun season, a really, really cool season where God has been the center and done some really cool things for us. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we kind of had a spit of adversity there, a yeah. little bit of a storm. So we had a record 24 and two going into the week, uh, I'd say week prior to this, before going into Tarleton and uh, the travel trip to Texas, basically, and uh, Abilene Christian. And so going into it, that's a big weekend because Tarleton's, uh, you know, basically rivaling us for first place in the conference right now. And so to win that game would create a big gap. Um, and so that basically was a championship game for us. And um, pretty much just going into it, uh, we kind of dropped the ball. And, um, you know, they ended up beating us. And it was really hard to kind of go through that. You know, it's a championship game. And, you know, just uh, not be on top, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate. Um, it's like we've been on top for so long. And it's like we'd had such success that it was like, it was like, like I mean, we'd beat Tarleton at home by a substantial amount. And it was like, that was like a good punch to the throat. It was like, mm -hmm. man, that really, really sucked. It really hurt. Yeah. I know, at least for me, yeah. I, I wasn't on the court, <laughs> but that sucked a lot for me. Yeah, it wasn't the best feeling, I'll tell you that. And then just to, you know, compound it, right? Uh, to make the road trip even better, you know, we had to lose one to Abilene Christian as well. Which, and, uh, like, no offense to these guys, but it's like, they, they're, they're not having their best year. Now, no. respect to the whole team, the whole program, everything like that. Like, they're very talented individuals. Um, it's just, you know. It was a game that we, we... We could have easily won. Yeah, that we were predicted to win, and we probably should have. That's but a good way to put it. They, mm -hmm. Abilene Christian, all kudos to them. They played, a, they played a really good game. They had a really, really good game. And... We just laid two eggs in a row, bad. Mm -hmm. and it was, I don't know, it was, it tested our team a lot, tested just the faith of our team and just different guys individually, their faith and a lot. And it was, it was, it's been a rough, rough little week after that. Yeah, so. yeah, Coach Drew put us through the ringer, I'll tell you that. But the, the thing about that game that made it so important, the Abilene Christian one, is even though if we lost to Tarleton, um, we'd still have a one game advantage for first place. So even though that was a championship game, even if we lost, we'd still be in first place. But, you know, we God, didn't. God had a good plan for yeah, it. Yeah, we, we lost to Abilene Christian too, which now makes us tied for first place. So um, if we both win the season out, then we both share the, the regular season championship. Now to go into that, it was a big struggle that I was kind of going through throughout it is like even with your faith, even if, you know, your feet is so firmly planted in God, you still have struggles. And um, the struggles for that week was basically trying to separate my value from the worldly success. And so when you have, I guess, failure like that, it's like, how do you separate, you know, your value that God gives you? And how do you be reminded of that when basically what your job to do and what the world looks at you as, um, you know, you're not, you're not doing it successfully. How do, you, how do you separate the two successes between Christ's success and then the world of like basketball? And mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, it exactly. Was, it tested both of those in a way. It was like guys were going back and forth, arguing with each other. And it's like, this is not where we need to be or where we... I want to be as a team and it's like the basketball success like dude we've been so successful we had we've had such a good year and it was like those were two games that really hurt mm -hmm. especially the acu game it was like man guys were not we weren't on the same page at all no mm -mm. and so it's like just trying to find like regain that trust and regain that like peace the peace of like man basketball is just like a stepping stone to build up to just so, I mean, it's just a gift that God gives us. Like we were talking today, it's like, when we go to heaven, it doesn't matter if we can make a jump shot or not. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, Seriously. it doesn't matter how many rebounds you grab, how many minutes you play, how many points you score. Like, to heaven, God looks, that's nothing. And it's like, that was tested as well as basketball. And it's like, 
it, I think it really blossomed our team a little bit because we came out and killed these last two games. Yeah, and it's it's been a, it's been amazing. Um, you know, the things that uh, I like to say when adversity hits, and I'd like to err on the side of trusting God, of course. I mean, always. But even in a lot of adversity, um, these these were a little bit harder. I think I'm going through a season where it's like I got to be more resilient. Honestly, that's my personal. I think where he's making me grow a lot. Mm-hmm. But um, it's to know that God always has a plan in some stuff and in, in everything. And um, it's basically like God never promised it'd be easy. God never promised there wouldn't be any adversity. But God does promise victory. And um, being able to carry that out and cling to that hope actually helps you in a lot of different ways. And so looking at those two losses, it's like, okay, well, what could God possibly do with this? And I was trying to search for that peace. Where is God wanting me to find this peace? You know, diving into the word, diving into all these different things and trying to really find, first of all, where our value comes from. And then second of all, like what's our mission and our purpose? And then third of all, like, where's the hope? Yeah. And so for me, it's like God made us, like simply enough, like in Genesis 1, right? Like it, he literally just made us in his image, right? And I think that's the coolest thing. Like we were made out of just a ball of clay. Literally a ball of clay. And he breathed the breath of life. Like what? Like the poetry in that? Just I'm not a big poetry guy, but breathe the breath of life. That's like some of the coolest lines ever, I think. So right? it's so tough. Mm-hmm. Breathe the breath of life. <sighs> no, it's 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 crazy. It's poetic, but it's also so powerful because like it's that the most image, simple form of just like love and like mm-hmm. just what we have to lean on faith is that we were given life. Just mm-hmm. just the breath, and that's what we lean on. It's like it's the most simple, but like faithful message you can have i think it's the coolest thing ever yeah no seriously it's just so simple but it's just amazing it's mm -hmm. the coolest thing ever i think it's a i think it's just a beautiful thing like you look at it we are the only thing in this universe that is made from his being Mm -hmm. right in his image and like filled with the holy spirit Right, just to be spiritually alive, to be able to, you know, at least have a relation and relate to him in any sort of way. And I think that's just a beautiful thing. And so that shows us where our value is. It's like we were made in that. And then you can go to Jeremiah twenty nine eleven where it's like we are, you know, we have a plan. He has a plan mm-hmm. for us. No, and for like sure. with every single purpose. Like every single step, everything. It's like nothing's without his plan. Mm-hmm. Nothing. And yeah. And so that shows it's that kind of scary to think about too. <laughs> what do you mean? That like nothing we do, he's it's planned out in some way. Like in some way, God has his hand in all of it. Literally, literally, good or bad. And so that's what we're trying mm-hmm. to find, right? In the middle of this, like, where is this win or loss like coming from? Like, where, where can where I find God's this peace? Yeah, where's God's hand in it all? Where is He moving us? Like, where does He need us to be in that moment? Mm-hmm. Like Ray always says, be where your feet are. Mm-hmm. Like, be present in that moment. It's like we were trying to find like where God had our feet. Like, where did he need us to be in that moment? It was such a growing, like a moment of adversity for our team. But I feel like we grew so much, even through Coach Drew, just, man, those practices were terrible. Oh, my gosh. Awful. Literally just put an hour on the clock, hour 20 on the clock. And just run it. No, no plan. No, it was just, oh, and it was coming back for <laughs> two a day, another, like, hard practice. But it was like, that's where, that's where God needed our feet to be at that moment. Mm-hmm. And it was like, dude, we in the grew, trenches. Yeah, in the trenches, like in, in actual practice gym trenches. Aww. God needed our feet there, like with our shoes laced up, taped ankles. Like God needed our feet there, and it was like we needed that more than anything. I feel like, cause man, we we were tested, we were punched in the face, and it was mm-hmm. like, man, I feel like we grew so much in just that week as a team. Yeah, like guys, the locker room has been so much more lively and just. Mm-hmm. full of love and I mean that comes with senior night too but I think that was like just the love and everything that like it was more peaceful and like I don't know it was just something different in the locker room than past I mean mm-hmm. we've beaten so many good teams and we've played so well yeah it's like the the moments in the locker room have been so much better now than they were it's like 
God had our feet there for a reason. Those losses just exactly. happened. For a reason. For a reason. And that's... For such a crazy, unbelievable, beautiful reason that we won't 100%. understand. We won't understand. And that's part of the beauty in it, too, is like sometimes we don't even understand why God is doing some of these things, but simply just trusting something you don't believe in is it's a simple answer, right? Even just getting into your word and being like, God, you know what? I have no clue what you're doing. I have no clue how I can even get through this storm. But that's the point is like alone, you're not supposed to get through the storm, right? You're supposed to cling to God and his omnipotent power and just who he is. And so if you cling to that, then you can make it through any storm, right? We, uh, I don't know if it was anything with you, but I um, heard the story of basically Jesus being in the boat, right? Mm-hmm. When the storm's coming in Matthew, I think it's Matthew 8. And um, Jesus is asleep just in the boat and a giant storm comes and all the just guys are the, like... The peace through the storm, just Jesus' peace. Yeah, Jesus' peace. And it's just, it's like, God, like, wake up, like all this stuff. Jesus, wake up, like, we need your help. But... He's like, no, or he's like, yes, but like, know who I am, mm-hmm. know who I am with me. Like I can, I can conquer anything. And all of a sudden, like, it's just calm. And the guys are just so shook. They're like, wow, like he even, his, his voice, like the, even the winds and the seas, like obey him. Yeah. And I think that's so cool. But um, just knowing who our God is, is also important too, right? Just cling to the father. Like, I think that is so important knowing that we are valued because we are made by the guy that literally has the seas and the waves and the winds all obey him. And then the second thing is also knowing our purpose and our mission, right? Our purpose and our mission, right? Noah was talking about it where it was like, if we were to go to heaven, right? Like, is God going to be like, yeah, that basketball game where you scored 30? (laughs) Man, that was one of my favorite moments. Like, no, it's not going to be that. It's going to be, that's what's going to get you into heaven. That's what's going to get you into heaven. (laughs) You're lucky you had that game. (laughs) If not, yo, I'll be honest, like, yo, 29, you, these gates would be closed. (laughs) But that's not, that's not it. It's the simple fact that you know, we believe in him, but also like where God calls us to is like to, to be on mission. And um, there's a verse I want to share, Philippians 2, uh, 3 through 5. And it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humi- humility, value others above yourselves, not looking for your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And your relationships uh, with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. And so like where I want to focus on that is like, you know, where, where is your ambition, right? It says, do not do it out of your own ambition or vain conceit or anything like that, but like with humility, value others above yourselves. And then this is one of the most important part. Noah said it earlier, it's just the mindsets, right? In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Like, what was he here to do? Yeah. You know, was it to show off his cool, you know, uh, miracles that he can do. Yeah, I mean that's look at that's, me. I can make this guy walk who hasn't ever walked. Yeah, I can like, walk on water. Yeah, <laughs> you can't walk on water. I can. I can. Look at me. No, but it, it, that that was important. That is a part of his story because I mean, you know, to show how powerful God is. Yes, He does give you those things sometimes just to like He's given us as a platform as basketball. To, you know, share His word. And without that, I don't think we we'd see many of you guys here like watching this, listening to this. Honestly. But I would this, just be a seven footer walking around in the world. Dude, I'd just be a short six, seven guy compared to you. I mean, shoot. But uh, the ultimate mindset of Christ Jesus was to, you know, build that bridge to God. And um, that same mindset for us is to try to get other people to build that bridge with God. You know, I mean, not build it, but walk that bridge. Yeah. Try to help guide them. Mm-hmm. And so with that, it's like, okay, you know, we lost two games, but what are we here for? Yeah, what's our true purpose? What's our true purpose? And so that's what we cling to. You know, as much as I love the game of basketball, as much as it's a, it's a miracle and it's a beautiful thing, I know God's going to do his work for it. And I know he's going he's gonna to make something great out of it. And sometimes, like, you look at the adversity and it's like, you know, God's going to do something good. You know, what the enemy has for evil, the enemy will, or God will turn for good. And, um, yeah, so just leaning on that. And then seeing how he had that revival kind of on our team, like we needed a loss. Because honestly, there was something. Yeah, when you win, yeah. sometimes some things are hidden. Some mm-hmm. of the things that, you know, we, we weren't confronting, they weren't getting confronted until 
Yeah. We looked at ourselves in the mirror and was like, let me, mm-hmm. let me knuckle down and yeah. buckle down and, and get to work. So it's that. And then also, there's a new hope that's born. It's just, we trust in God. So be it. Amen. Yeah. We serve a big God. He's going to do something amazing out of it. So never promises it was going to be easy, but he promises it was, there will be victory. There'll be a way out. Mm-hmm. So that's that. But... So yeah, that's kind of been the last two weeks kind of in a wrap. Yeah, in a wrap, if you could say that. But uh, just, to, just to sum that all up, like if you guys ever struggle separating your value in the world um, for where God truly sees you, just dive deep into the word and honestly think about like some of these points where what is God going to look at when you get to heaven? You know, what is he going to say well done for? And... Well, it's on just it. like it was on that chapel a few few days ago, last week, where it was like, we have 60,000 thoughts every day. 60,000. Mm-hmm. And it's like 95% of them are repeating thoughts, and 75% of them are negative. Like, it's when you're going through a valley or a storm that's like, it's of the world. It's like, sometimes you just gotta, like, like Gabe said, dive in the word or just be in prayer. Like, because if you just keep those thoughts going, Sometimes you just need like a mental reset where it's like, spend some time with the Lord. It's like, yeah, we got hit in the face, but it's like, Coach Drew gave us that reset. It was like, man, we're going to work our butts off and we're going to get back to where we were. It's like, sometimes if you're going through it, it's like, just try to find the Lord in any way. Some, like, he'll work his way in and he'll make, like, he'll resolve things for you. Like, just trust in him and kind of find every, every little thing that he's putting his hand on in that moment. Mm-hmm. Just look for it and try to find it. Yeah, 100%. It reminds me of a verse where, like, when we were talking about, I don't remember the verse exactly, I'll be honest. We could, we could put it up here, uh, you know, when we think of it. But, um, like, you gotta, you gotta feed your heart, you gotta cleanse your heart, first of all, the things that, you know, isn't of God. Then you gotta feed your heart the things that are from God. Mm-hmm. And then you gotta protect your heart to make sure mm-hmm. it stays that way. And so, um, Make sure if you do have those thoughts, get those out of there. Yeah. You know, try to try to just overflow it with things that are, you know, being fed from the Lord. Like the good yeah, positive sure. things and then protect your heart. You know, be your own best friend. And in moments of adversity, like just remind yourself of those things. Um, and I think that's that's super important. No, for sure. But I don't know, I kind of want to get into the good news, I'll be honest. You've been so excited telling us. I've been so excited for like two weeks. You gotta just. Oh, okay. It's a great little segment segue. Just good news. It is so crazy how God can move. Um, and like people see that, you know, our, our record, I think we're 25 and four, right? 26 and four. 26 and four. 26 and four. Wow, we're 26. That's crazy. That's, That's crazy. crazy. That's you, know, really you know what I saw? Senior night was on game 30. That was kind of tough. I'm not going to lie. Oh. Isn't that kind of tough? That's really cool. My, my jersey's number number 30, by the way. But uh, So it was kind of cool. Um, and he's a senior, so it was his night on game 30. Four crazy. number 30. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> okay. On, on Ray's birthday. <laughs> on Ray's birthday. <laughs> that is no. Yeah, my birthday was the next day. I know. I'm just kidding. Um, but anyways, anyways, anyways. So uh, you guys. I hope- feel like I should have prepared like a reaction. Like a. <laughs> just like a clickbait, just <laughs> yeah, like a, like a thumbnail <laughs> kind of reaction. Yeah, right. Dude, he's been like a little kid about this. Like, oh, I got good news. Like, it is so guy, crazy. I, I went up. It was so good that I went up to the coach's office and I was like, "All right, we we, we had a meeting with coach." Mm-hmm. And um, after I was like, "Well, guess what happened?" And like the whole coaches kind of came out of their their uh, meet, like their their offices, their dens, <laughs> their dens, and just met in the middle. And we're all like, "No way!" Like that is so crazy. Like it was one of the coolest things. And so I'm so happy to be able to share that with you, with all you guys. Um, so if you guys follow me on Instagram, I like to post uh, kind of whenever I feel like God's really like calling me to. I don't really want to do it out of my own, you know, selfish ambition or anything like that. But like whenever I have a message, I like to just put it out there. And um, after one of the games we played uh, at UT Arlington, one of the players, I won't, I won't name him right now, uh, because I don't know if he wants me to share this all, um, but one of the players reached out to me and was like, hey, 
Um, I had thought about this even before the game, that I was going to contact you, but I'd love to know more about God. Wow. And so it was the coolest thing. So I'm like, yeah, for sure. Let's get to it. And I was like, hop on a phone call with me. So we FaceTime, and I'm like, it'll only be about 30 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Well, it ended up being like two hours. And we went, I like, we went through the whole gospel, not the whole like gospel, but like a s- snippet of it. Like, what yeah. is the good news? What is the gospel? And um, at the end of it, you know, just shared what Jesus did um, and was like, what does it take for us to, you know, accept Jesus and like follow him? And what mm-hmm. does that look like? And then at the end, like, we both prayed the prayer. And he surrendered his no life to Christ. No way! And so oh it is so God. cool. That's a bro. That's oh, that's so sick. It is amazing, and to see like his joy. He's been so. It's been like two, three weeks, right? Uh-huh. And um, because that night I f- filmed the first podcast, I knew I was gonna have this call, mm-hmm. but I was having the call that night. Yeah. And so I didn't know if like I'm like something cool's happening. Yeah. But I couldn't tell you yet. It's God's working. Because God was working. You didn't know in what way. Oh. Um, but God is moving. And then a cool thing is like, not too long ago, another player reached out from Stephen F. Austin. Wow. And so we're going to hop on a call too. And it's just, it's just crazy to see how cool God's moving, but it's kind of scary too, to be honest, because UT Arlington, since we've had that call is playing remarkably. And this player is going crazy going crazy and it's because good for him bro yeah i'm so proud of him though like that is so awesome he's texting me like man like you should get on the phone with like my sister i want her to know all about this and so he's spreading the word too and um he's he's just on fire for the lord he's like he's i see him posting on instagram like he has his little things like whoa look what god's teaching me and he is chasing the faith like no other You're a fisher of men you and it's so it's well, not me it's all it's all him and it's all god honestly oh, but, so but it's cool. so cool to be a vessel and all that that's so awesome you got me shaking i feel my body like internally like oh no, that's it's such a so cool, story, cool man bro. like i can't tell you i don't know the player gave obviously in sure the name but shout out to whoever you are that is amazing i am so unbelievably happy that you decided to do that, brother. That is so cool. Mm-hmm. Like, like when when in the Bible when it says someone gives their life to Christ, heaven rejoices. Brother, just know two weeks ago when you gave your life, it was a celebration in heaven. Mm-hmm. That everyone was dancing and singing praises. So hopefully I get to know the player's name after and we can meet up sometime and all we can all have lunch or something. That'd yeah. be so cool. And but maybe one day we can have him on the podcast. How that cool would, be the would that be? The coolest thing ever. Like it would be the coolest thing. And just a message to you. Um, like I'm proud of you. Like I know God is looking down at you, proud of you. Um, and that's the proudest moment you God can have for someone. Yes. That smile on his face, man. Brother, that is so cool. And just keep that's going. That's one of the coolest moments ever. Mm-hmm. Keep going because I guarantee you, like, and I promise you, through God's promise. I'm going to have like this like special like has smile on my face and everything, dude. You just uh, made my night, bro. That is so cool. This is the coolest thing. But keep going because God will always be with you. Even in adversity, like cling to him. Um, even when times get hard, like just keep going because I promise you, like God will always be there for you. And it'll be the best thing ever. And so I'm proud of you. Just keep going, like. You got all the love from me and all the love from him, too. And for, and for me, even though I don't know you personally, brother, I am all for you now. I am mm-hmm. a total fan now. Yeah. I'm I like all you. emotional, bro. That's so cool. <laughs> Those <laughs> stories awesome. are the coolest things ever. Mm-hmm. And hopefully next episode, we, we, could, we could have another one of those moments. So No, for sure. That'd be so cool. But uh, I'm slacking. if you guys are out there, like, this is the whole purpose of why we want to do this. So, uh just keep praying that you know we'd be able to reach hearts that god could you know and never be afraid seeds. to reach out never Mm-mm. it's like a question that you have it's like if we don't know how to answer it we'll direct you in the path of someone who knows how to answer that question like we will get you what you need to have you know what i mean mm-hmm. like because that's like i said it just puts a joy in your heart that's like heaven was rejoicing because of just a simple, a simple act. And it's like, dude, like you're changing eternal addresses. Like God is working through you. Like wow. if you have any questions, just reach out, please. Like that is the coolest thing. 
like it's kind of selfish, but it's the coolest thing that we can have happen as followers and as stewards of God. But it's like, that's the coolest thing for you and for heaven that can ever happen to anyone's life. Mm. So it's like anything that anyone ever has questions about, please, please DM me or Gabe or like, the please. Podcast, just do, yeah, anything. the podcast, anything, please. Because we'd love to help you out with your faith journey. That's one of the coolest things ever. I mean, that's what we're going to school for. Right. It's like, right. let us help you. Like, I don't know. Now I'm now in the, bro, I want to just go out and just like yell about Jesus. Oh, just it's so around. awesome, dude. That's it so is cool. so awesome. God is so good. I'm so Praise glad you Lord. saved that story. That is so awesome. That's I so know. cool. Oh, I'm so happy I did too. But all the coaches when we were up there were like, no way. Like, it's cool to see coaches get so excited about it because mm -hmm. their, their livelihood is in basketball like yeah. how we play and knowing that even one of our opponents is accepting the lord and they have that most joy it's so cool to be a part of that Such and a blessing uh, to have that as it's like it's really a blessing our coaching staff man um just for you guys out there too i know i keep referencing you guys i keep breaking the fourth wall all this stuff right uh but be bold in the things god's calling you to do you know, move if you feel like God's calling you to move. And that could be in any regard. Like if God's calling you to, you know, try this new thing out, post on social media, um, simply, you know, do one of the gifts that you're being called to do, like drawing or writing or anything. Just just go for it because you never know what God can do with it and what God can do with a yes. And so we serve a big God. Don't put him in a box. He can He can work miracles and wonders just like, basketball for us we never yeah. knew no so go and, and be bold and let him be your shield and always carry your sword 100 percent. if you have questions along the way don't be afraid to ask never be afraid to ask questions that's like my biggest thing when i grew up was like never be afraid to ask questions about anything mm -hmm. it's like if you don't know something it's okay like you're new in it like me and gabe second podcast we still have no idea what we're doing at all yeah but it's like now we're, try, we're starting to try to get people behind us that can help us make this reach as many people as possible. And it's like God's working in so many amazing ways because we took that first step. It's like there are people working in the backgrounds. It's like I never knew that this could happen. It's the coolest thing. Like we have a three camera setup right now. Mm, shout out Johnny. Shout out Colin. Yeah, shout you guys out. Like we we came in with one GoPro and we tilted the light upside down so that we could have lighting. For Isn't that crazy? Point. Like and now we're we're here with this. Hang on, hand me the camera. I want to show you guys. Yeah, I want to show you guys. Show you guys the setup. Ever. Hopefully, I can get this right. Hopefully. <laughs> so we got Colin here. What up, guys? What up? What up? We got Johnny. I don't know if I can hear me, bro. Then we got like our two grow pros up here, right? And then we got this camera. And then we have another one like right here. Yeah. Say hi, It's Noah. crazy. Like the way God can work. Literally. Just, just because we took a step to make this happen. It's like now we got these two dudes who are flipping amazing. They're so cool. And it's like. Wish I knew how to zoom. Now they're helping. <laughs> <laughs> just twist it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's tough. <laughs> there you go. You have to press the shutter button to focus it. So otherwise oh. it would be blurry. Oh. Oh, my fingers aren't even right. There we go. There we go. Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> That's tough. All right, I'm going to hand it back before I break it. Get you guys. There so you go. Like, yeah, protect them, protect them. It's <laughs> like, be bold, ask questions. Like, take that first step because you never know where it can lead you. Like, we had one GoPro and it tilted over light. Well, two, but one was... <laughs> yeah. Now we have not even three, four cameras mm -hmm. and it's like... So crazy, dude. God is just. I don't. I like like he like works in mysterious ways. He works in like unbelievable. Like cause it's not mysterious. Like because it's all for like a plan. But like, I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm sitting here in front of three cameras with two camera guys. Like that's the. Can you, this is the coolest thing ever. I'm dude. <sighs> and credit to you guys too because you guys helped plant those seeds. Um, no, hundred percent. And you know we walked with like a little bit of timidness. I'll be honest. But uh, we ended up, you know, saying yes and like embarking on it. And whether this gets one view or I don't know, a lot, it oh, doesn't really? matter. Like it'll it'll be super cool to see, even if it just impacts one heart. And um, but thank you guys because you guys planted seeds and you know God watered them. And it's cool to kind of see how God's watering all this. And so it's funny how it all started from Instagram Live. 
Literally, Instagram Live. And so don't one comment on Instagram Live, and we're here. Literally, it's mm-hmm. so cool. And so never doubt how much God can water you and water your gifts and water your gifts that will point towards the kingdom. So keep going. <sighs> All right, you kick off this one. You kick off this one. Let's do. You want to do the the that was that was very like emotional. I need something to kind of. That was like, awesome. Well, you want to you want to just like. It's mellow out. We can do who we played now. Kind of like mellow out. Yeah, that works. Good, that works. That'll be good. Chill. That'll be good. Going from one player, you know, uh, a new Christian athlete. Yeah. To, to now just general hopefully, players. yeah, general players, but hopefully one day Christians. But anyways, and maybe they are. We don't, we don't know, yeah. honestly. But yours is really cool. Mine are up and coming because I'm a younger guy. All right. You want me to go first? You give one. We'll give two. We'll give two. Okay. Well, I have a handful guys i do have a handful of guys too we can just spitball them out yeah okay one of, the, one, of the, <laughs> um, one of the coolest dudes i've ever played against is i played against Bronny james in like a just regular all-star tournament kind of thing and that was really cool like lebron didn't show up the, the james family didn't show up or anything but i got to not only see him play other games but i got to step on the court with him which was flipping cool that, that really is cool. that is gonna be hard to top. Not gonna lie. Okay, yours is. Oh, I mean, yeah, but like that's like, jeez. It would have been cool if like LeBron was in the crowd or something. <laughs> yeah, like LeBron stepped out of the court. Yeah. And was like, I'm playing in this yeah, place. Or he's like, I would, like he was coaching. That would be cool. That would be crazy. That would be cool. Okay, so for me, uh, I played against Ja Morant twice. So that's... that was a lot of fun. Um, it wasn't fun in the moment. I'll be honest. But it was a lot of fun, uh, you know, a good memory to look back, back on. on it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because he probably could you find you guys. Yeah, I mean, the most impressive thing for me wasn't how he scored; it was how he just passed the ball. Like really? usually, I'm good at reading, like, you know, help defense when you're like, uh, uh. Mm-hmm. And he had me shook because he hit me with a. Oh. And I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, that was nice. But uh, I did block him. Like, so oh, I said, oh, hey, get there that you out go. of here. I get that out. Maybe I could find some old clips. If there's no clip on here, it just probably didn't look good or I don't have it. <laughs> so, or I couldn't find it. Or I couldn't find it. But um, no, those are definitely cool moments for sure. Um, I played against Ty Ty Washington. I played he with played, him. Yeah. I played against him. I played, he played like two minutes, but. No, that's, that's super cool. We played against him. I played against Mikey Williams, who got into a little bit of trouble, but was supposed to be like mixed. Yeah, played against like guys like Elijah Fisher, who's at DePaul. I'm trying to think about any NBA guys I played. Against. Everyone I played against is way too young. Um, I've played with when I was younger Marvin Bagley. Oh my which, gosh, he's on the Pistons. I played against him too. Uh, Saban Lee played with him and against him, who's on the Suns right now. Um, and then there's more, um, Marcus Howard, who was with the Nuggets. He's now overseas. See, I've never Nico played Mannion. with, I've never played with any, any guys I've played. I've always just played against them. It's some of the coolest things sometimes, but, uh, I don't know. Where I, where I played against a lot of these guys, like Cody Williams, I played against and. Jalen Williams, I played yeah. against his older brother. Is I was at like the Pangos All American Camp. Is everyone was there? It's like all those guys will eventually be like big names, mm-hmm. but it's like everyone was there. It was like those are the guys. Like when I played against most of them and played. That's with. actually cool. So even yeah, though I was only there for a little bit before I got hurt. Yeah. But <laughs> I was there. Let's see who I've played against. Oh well, uh, March Madness last year and the that's, year before. Drew Timmy. That's crazy. Um, Julian Strother. Uh, Luca Garza. That's really cool. So, oh, 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 Keegan Murray. Oh, Luke Garza is cooler than Keegan Murray. No, John Keegan Moran's Murray's cooler cooking than right now, though. But. John Moran's cooler than all of them, even though he's <laughs> not uh, the best person. Technically, it wasn't in a game, but I went to a camp with Tyrese Halliburton. That's pretty cool. So he's cooking too. Yeah, I'm in a group message he's with playing. him. It's kind of tough. It's like he's he's a, he's a believer too. Um, and so it's really cool to see the success that he's been having. Like he's wow. first time, uh, you know, all star in the team he plays for is City, Indiana. So it's really cool to see what he's doing. But um, yeah, 
It's, he's, he's a good guy. He really is. That's really cool. Do they, do they text and group chat after? Mm-hmm. Just like we that? sometimes send little devotionals every once in a while. So, it's dope. That probably is the coolest thing you've ever said in your entire life. That's probably... Okay, wait, no, no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The story that you told earlier was so cool. No, it's but actually That's actually so cool. sick. That's so cool. Mm-hmm. And then just congratulate each other, because it's all basketball players, so we just all congratulate each other on like how their season's going. So he knows, like, he knows you. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, if you went up and shook his hand, he'd be like, oh, hey, what's up, dude? Yeah, he never followed me back, I'll be honest, but... Oh, I mean, we're still, we're still cool, though. I think so. You yeah. have his phone number. I do have his phone That's number. That's cooler than a follow back, yeah. I think. I mean, he only followed back like three people from that camp. And it was a small camp. It was like a 30, 30 people camp. So You should expose him right he, now. He was, yeah, expose him. You better follow me back. No, but uh, no, he was my <laughs> passing partner. We had like, you know, you got to throw the ball through. Because the, they kept everyone's name and like identity kind of a secret when we were there. So they didn't know like what school I was from. When was, this was? Two years ago. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, it was just a nice little PGC college and pro camp. And uh, wow. they kept everyone's, like, kind of where they're from, all this stuff, like, kind of secret. And uh, only first name basis. And so it was, it was really cool. It was very, like, humbling, but, like, faith was a big part of it. And so it was cool. He was my passing partner. And so it was, nice. it was, I was like, whoa, nice. whoa. <laughs> that was dope, though. It was really no, that's cool. really cool. But yeah, never followed me back. Probably it's okay though. Well, I wasn't hurt by it. Yeah, he's a good guy. No, but <clears throat> yeah, what? Nothing. That was just that's just it. Yeah, just like um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, but that's <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hang on. Let me look up another topic. You want to move to the next one? What do we got going? On? <laughs> we could either do. This one, this one, or this one, honestly. I see you just go in that order. Go in that order? You want to kick off the next one then, too? It's your, it was your, okay. That's it's, true. All right, yeah, all right. It's your night. So, senior night happened. Now we're breaking this down. Um, Gabe's been in college forever. So I've been in college for a while. We could have had two or three of these already, but yeah. this is one. But I, I was decided to do only one. Yeah. And, uh, you know, been at GCU for five years. I redshirted my first one and then played four here. And, yeah, I had to say goodbye to playing on the home court, what, two days ago? Yeah. It's kind of an emotional moment. And um, it was the coolest thing, though, because, uh, I don't know, I think God kind of wrote it a little bit poetically, I'll be honest. Um, I gave a chapel that morning to the team, and it was about amen, which is... If you do the translations right, when Jesus or God says it, it's the truth, it's the period, it's the certainty, the virility of it. Um, like it's, it's infallible. And then when we say amen, it means like, I believe, so be it, right? You need to just start with that. That's my favorite part is just amen means so be it. Amen means so be it. That's I love so... it. But you got to break it down. So it's, yeah, you know, it's the truth. And um for me, like, uh, being able to give that, you know, one thing I write on my shoe, amen, every, like, I just wear those in every game. Mm-hmm. Just the word amen on my shoes, it gives me a foundation of why I play, and, like, if adversity hits, so be it. Yeah. And um, it's, it's really cool to see how God moves, so just be able to give that to the team and then see these interactions that I had, these personal interactions that I, I got to share with these guys, it was, it was the best thing. But... Um, even just going out before the game, being able to say the pregame prayer, yeah. I thought that was that was really cool. Um, but it was sad, you know. I got a little teary eyed. I didn't know what would happen, and all these emotions just kind of come up. I'm not really the most uh, crying type of person, but yeah, that that moment kind of hit me. Just seeing like how blessed and how good God really is, and you know what he's that crowd for the last time. Yeah, right. And what he's done with someone who honestly is so undeserving to be able to be given. Um, okay, and a cool thing that you like did that. that you didn't rip that in your chapel, he gave everyone a Bible. Like, he, like the coaches have given out like the Old Testament, just like a small thing or giving out sheets and stuff, but gave me it like really personal. So he highlighted and circled the end of the Bible, which ends with amen, so be it. And that's what he preached on the word 
That's the chapel he gave. Sorry, I didn't preach on it, but that's the chapel you gave was on that word. And then Gabe went in and highlighted an individual like verse for every player. And then, so he had all these verses, and then he kind of ended it with, everyone bring your Bibles back tonight for the game, and I'm going to give you a letter with the meeting and the reason why I picked those verses. It's like, as guys are like opening their Bible, like looking at their verses, some guys like would read it and look up at Gabe all confused and like look around, and, like peek behind him and look, read it again and like, I wonder what that means. And then when Gabe came back and gave all letters, I was like, okay, at least <laughs> they'll know what they're doing. Yeah. But it was, like, it was really cool because like, like, I, like you, read, you read your letter and I was like, man, like Gabe actually like thought about it. And I was like, man, this like, it like hit home because like, I'm more emotional than you are by quite a bit. <laughs> And it's like, dude, I read that letter when I got home, and I was just like, like, I really found a brother, like a true brother in Christ. It was like, I was just sitting in my room, and I was just like, I just read it, and I had my fan, I was just like this, and just tears started coming down my face. It was like, you found a brother in Christ with UT Arlington. It's like, you saved someone, but it's like, bro, I found a brother in Christ. Like, it's the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. like, a, like a true rock on Christ. It's like, we're going through life together. Like when both of us are getting like water. Yeah. Bro, I don't want to hear. <laughs> but and like one of I the appreciate. coolest things ever that he wrote on it was like brothers, like till eternity, like or like through eternity. Into I'm eternity. Like, like we're really not just gonna do this life together, but we're gonna do more than just this life together. Into eternity. Right. Yeah. And That's I found so a brother cool. in Christ too. That's, That's so sure. cool. It was. No, it was a very emotional night for obviously seniors, but. Gabe left a mark on a lot of those guys because I was telling him after, like he called me in between the periods and he's like, do you think I did a good job? And I was like, dude, it's amazing. I'm like, you know when you get those little gifts like at Christmas and stuff and it's like, you can tell someone had like, like thought behind it. And it's like, those gifts like end up being thrown away or something, but it's like, this gift, those guys will never throw away because it's like, they have the Bible and they have like the meaning behind why you chose them. And it's like, they'll all, like they will always know that you have their back in any way. And so it was 100%. like, that was 100%. one of the coolest gifts you could give to the guys. So I commend you on that. It was amazing. Even like you could have given the worst chapel we've had all year, but that gift and just the message that you left every guy, unbelievable. Super cool. So. I appreciate you. Of course, of Thank course. You. Love you into eternity, brother. Always, always. Always. Uh, yeah, so senior night was yeah. fun, um, but sad. Um, and you made it emotional for everyone. That's what sucked. Because <laughs> I read my novel, bro, and I'm like, oh, this is terrible. Uh, yeah. It was. And I'm like, oh, you just sit there and you're like, really, God, like, this is like, <laughs> like, this is supposed to be a good moment. Like, we just won and this and that. And I'm like, just crying in my room. Yeah. Yeah, it was like, and then the whole word like undeserved, I'm like, well, God, why do I deserve Gabe? Like, why? I was like, I don't. I was like, I don't, and you just put him here. And it's like, he changed my life, and like he's totally flipped like the script a little bit for me. And I was like, this is the coolest thing ever. And so, just know that that you. gift in the pregame prayer and everything reached more people than we thought. And I think like everyone in the team would agree that like those messages mean a lot more than they'll ever show to you or ever tell you or you know what I mean so mm -hmm. you you did a lot that night for everyone even the prayer with the fans and stuff so I know you wanted to tell your little thing about senior no night, I just I, I knew, didn't know where I to knew, go with it I knew right when you told the story I had to kind of spray some emotion at you because I know that, that was super stressful for you but you did fantastic and you touched so many more people than you thought so well, I appreciate you and of course <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro. God, I don't even know what to say. I'm speechless. I, know. I think <laughs> I appreciate you, and and don't underestimate like how impactful you've been on my life, and and honestly, everybody else's life here too. I mean, yeah. there's a reason why every single game they go, we want Noah, <laughs> right? Uh, mostly started off by this guy right here yeah. behind the camera, <laughs> yeah. but um, dude, like the light you share and the light you shine is something that will reach the darkest crevices, honestly. 
And See, you already gave your little no. I don't need anything else. Oh, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> that was that was my turn to share it and give it back. It was my turn to give it back. I don't but I'm more. serious. But like mostly for me, dude. Like you've reached even the darkest places in my heart. Um, I appreciate that. And dude, like, yeah. Into like, eternity, baby. Into, into eternity. eternity. I, 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 I can't believe. Like honestly, throughout being here so long. Like, this brotherhood is one of the last things God gave me as a gift, and I couldn't have asked for it any better. And then you're flipping leaving me. And then you're leaving me. I know, I had to. Dang <laughs> it. You know, he I gave you. He gave me you for one year. <laughs> one year. <laughs> this goes Dude, on we into can change, We can change the world, bro, if we had, like, two or three years. We still can. Let's do it. Why not? This, Let's do it. I know, I'm, I'm this down is not ending after one year. Uh, no, 100%. In like you said, into eternity. A couple months. But like, you know, I'm just playing, I'm playing, no, it'll continue on, it'll continue on. It's so sad. Bruh. All righty, what we need to change the topic. Well, I, I don't remember, I need to, yeah. Oh, Jesus. What a good. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, you know, that's what this whole podcast is about. Yeah, not about us being like lovey-dovey to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With disclaimer, right? Yeah. This is a podcast about Jesus. Um, about Jesus, yeah. So we want to, Noah had on his heart. Um, There's like no good segue into this. I was hoping that we could like segue some part, like intertwine it in some way. I got you. Let's see if I could make something. All right. So honestly, brotherhood is one of the strongest things that you can have. Okay, and that bond is something that is super unbreakable. Um, and just simply to talk about how God sent himself, his son down, and how unbreakable that man Jesus Christ actually really was. And um, to kind of explain that, like you look at the stuff he has gone through on the cross. You know, I don't think that's shared enough in, no, in detail. Uh, I'm good now. Now that was a great segue. Yeah, that was a great yeah, segue. Was, I don't know. That was all him. Um, that was just flowing. That was kind of. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, like crucifixion is kind of like a terrible thing. Like it genuinely, it's awful. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, we don't have like an accurate like picture or depiction. I feel like personally of like the crucifixion of Jesus. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going through and I'm like. So I found, I found a couple of things and I'm like, dude, what, like, what truly was the crucifixion of Jesus? Because I feel like it's not represented enough. And so like, obviously Jesus was like beaten and broken, but it was like, this was in Deuteronomy 25.3. But, but the judge must not oppose more than 40 lashes if guilty. If the guilty party is flogged with more than that, then your fellow Israelites will, de will be degraded in your eyes. Mm. So basically being flogged was being beat or beat with a rod or whip. So you're being beaten, right? So you're being whipped basically. And so I was looking at it and I was like, what, like, I know what like a whip is obviously, like yeah. the modern day, mm -hmm. but I'm sitting there, I'm like, what did they use? Like what, what, what would have been their version of a rod or a whip? And Jesus was lashed, so he was hit with a whip. And they would have taken the hair of an animal, like a camel or some sort of animal, and they had a, kind of looped it all together and stuck nails or like bones of like animals or something inside this thing. And so when they would have hit you with it and the whip would have like wrapped around or grabbed into the skin, and then when they would have pulled it away, it would have just torn flesh and just torn like chunks of you and just ripped through your body. And I'm like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, whoa, like, why is this not talked about? Like, we all think like, oh, Jesus got hit with a, like, a whip and had a crown of thorns. But I'm like, dude was like pieces of like himself flying everywhere. Like, cause 40 lashes would have killed somebody. And they gave him 39. Like they beat him basically to death, just ripping chunks of him off. Like you would have been unrecognizable after that, after that kind of beating. Like, just imagine being whipped like that in the face, and there's, like, bones and nails just ripping your... Bro, like, like it truly, like, it hit home more, like, what Jesus did for me then in that moment than ever before. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who just... 
Go, like at any point, he could have just rained fire down from heaven and just killed everyone. Mm-hmm. And just ra- like had an army of angels come in and just flaming arrows, just Narnia style, killed everybody. Yeah. Just like in like he endured, like he sat through that for me and you. Mm-hmm. Like just skin being ripped away from him and then had to carry a cross. Yeah, that's. And then like every, like a lot of depictions have it like the nails through his hands or whatever. So I look into that. I'm like, then I'm like, now I'm into it. I'm like, all right, what, like, Jesus, what'd you truly do for me? You have two bones. I don't know the name of the bones. I looked at it and I was the like, ulna you know, and your uh, radius. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I got that <laughs> locked in over here. So you have the two bones that run <clears throat> each side of your arm. And so what they would have done is they would have taken the, the nail and they would have obviously like tried to miss the veins in your arms and just hammered in between those two bones in your arm. Basically, so when you hung, the bones would hold you in place. Mm. And then they would have basically taken your foot, bent it to where it pointed, and nailed through basically like where your, like above your ankle, through both feet. And then they would have put a little like wood panel so that underneath to give prisoners hope. This was to give them hope. This is sick. That was to give them hope? This is sick to me. To give them hope <laughs> and just a little bit of relief while they're dying on this cross is if you push your feet against it, if you have the energy to push your feet against this stand, you get to lift and you get, it makes it easy to breathe. Mm-hmm. So you can actually have breath. Yep. You know how sick that is? Mm-hmm. That's just terrible. And he just laid on that cross and did all that for three days. Just like, could you imagine, bro, just having, just building up the strength every like however long just to push yourself up, just so you can have like a good deep breath. Bro, like that to me, like that, like I try to imagine like the worst pain I ever had in my life, like with my knee and everything. Like that wouldn't have ever compared, ever. No, never. Ever. That you had to push off a block while you have nails in your feet just to get a breath. Mm-hmm. There was, uh, so Chris, our athletic trainer, gave a chapel on it, of course. Rightfully so, our athletic trainer, right? Yeah. Oh, knows the body. And... Like the fact of just being up there on that cross, regardless of having those lashes before, regardless of even just carrying that heavy cross all the way up, um, just simply being there, the strain it puts on your body, like having your arms like this, it like presses in on your lungs or something that he was saying that yeah. where you can't you can't breathe, you're literally suffocating, and so there's that hope, but then there's also just that you're trying to survive. And it's impossible. It's, it's, it's literally impossible. If you just sit there like this, your body can't handle it. Your muscles are already shutting down from what it is. You know, like you got literally, and it's just absolutely. And think about like, that. Like you're like, you probably wouldn't even just be flat back because you're standing straight up. So you're probably leaning forward. So oh, yeah. You're, 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 the things, the, the nails are holding you. Mm-hmm. And it's just between the bones and your nails and just the muscles in your arm holding you to a th- and like, plus all that, dude did nothing wrong. <laughs> like, like, you know, like when you're as a kid and your mom gets mad at you for doing something, you're like, mom, I didn't even do anything wrong. Mm-hmm. It's like your mom just yelling at you. This dude was like, <laughs> beat almost to death, hung on a cross, he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. And people were like making fun of him, like mocking him and stuff. I'm like. That's crazy. Like that, that is means crazy. so much more when you actually like look at it. Because I feel like we just like brush over it like all the pictures and everything don't like depict it the right way Mm -hmm. like that dude would have been unrecognizable he'd have been more open wound than flesh Mm -hmm. like that is so scary to me dude and like that that's scary like to think about that's what he did for me bro i don't i mess up every day like quite a like a lot dude one of our sins is worthy enough like think about that like a lie Mm-hmm. is worthy enough to more to get that punishment more than Jesus did. Simply yeah. as, as thought, a gossip. Over Looking eating, at someone the wrong way. Overeating yeah. is, is something deemed <laughs> gluttony. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Like, that is something that is... Um, overeating is worthy enough for someone to take that. Yeah. And one of the coolest, one of the coolest sayings, I don't know if you caught it in chapel today, was she was talking about when, when we enter the gates of heaven, she's like, I plead the blood of a substitute. 
Wow. When she said that, I about lost my mind. That is cool. That is really cool. When I see those, I plead the blood of a substitute. It's like every one of those sins, it's like I can honestly say I plead the blood of a substitute because someone took that sort of beating for me because I maybe over eight today at Havoc House. Wow. I plead the blood of a, set, of a substitute. I might make an Instagram reel about that. That's tough. I might have heard that wrong and I might have taken that. I'm taking that, that is, as my own quotations. Wham, <laughs> as I said that first year. I'm taking that as my own. That is tough. Yeah, I know. Um, she also dropped a very nice nugget too. I think, you yeah. know, we both looked at each other when she said it. It was, um, you know, no she matter ladder, how, ladder yeah, it was a ladder. Uh, the ladder analogy. No matter how high we try to climb, like we cannot get to God. But this is the only faith, the only religion, the only belief, belief system. system that talks about this where God decided to come down the ladder for us. Yeah. Was willing to step down off that ladder for us. And it's the coolest thing. But no, it's just, it's just crazy to think about all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, even the, the beautiful, like, kind of the poetry of it. Like, we were talking about plans, right, before, you mm -hmm. know, this was all planned already. Yeah. Like you, I, th I think the cross is one of the most, uh, you, you just described how vigorous and honestly haunting that is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the symbolism is absolutely gorgeous. No, because it's beautiful. The cross is seen as a tree in the Bible. I forgot the verse. I wish I would have thought about this before we even came in here, but um, we died when Adam and ate, Eve ate the tree of life, or uh, the tree of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we died when they ate that fruit yeah. from a tree. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus restored it all. Because the, the cross is made out of wood. And so it's, it's a, tr a tree. It's a it tree. Came from a tree. Yes, and it's, it refers to it somewhere oh in the gosh, Bible. Where did we... And I think that's one of the most beautiful things. But also, like, how God has really truly taken, like, the symbolism even gone up a level. Like, you think about when uh, you're seeing how this, the farmer is dropping seeds on accident, right? Like, mm -hmm. what soil is it going on? And uh, only the good soil is the only one that we can have. But then there is a soil that, you know, our seed is just, like, the soil is hard and our seed can't, you know, grow roots. Yeah. There's the ones where the birds come and eat the seeds. Mm -hmm. And then there's the seeds where, um, you know, it gr grows roots, but then the thorns yeah, engulf it. it. Yeah. And you think about that, the thorns like can represent the world, like really tra taking over like who we are, yeah. you know, and that evil. And if we don't have proper roots, like we're, we're gone. And so it's Jesus taking on those thorns Mm -hmm. and putting that on his head ah uh, okay i was kind of i was lost where you're going with that but that's yeah, a nice time like, i love it he is you know the yeah. king that took those thorns and was like you know what give me all your guys' thorns no. give me all the things that you know will be poking you in the side not letting you grow all the things that will keep you from my father yeah and let me wear those for you on top of my head and let you know that i am king of all these thorns. I am the king of all this sin and I'll never let you have to worry about it. Yeah. And I'll take it all so you, you know. So you don't have to worry about it. So it's not. Can get the crown that so will get you to my father. Yeah. And I'll take the crown of these thorns. That's crazy. Wow. Like in the city, it was all planned. Like every little detail, like how cool is that? This book does not contradict itself, mm -mm. but yet it tells such a beautiful story from beginning to end where it's literally everything it's is. It's a book of so much, like so much is in that. Like it's so many, like, that's what, that's what some things I don't like, like some people judge, like the Bible's not a perfect, like, I mean, it's a perfect book, sorry. But like, there's a lot of messed up people in the Bible. Everybody's messed up. Everyone. Everyone. It's like, there's so many like adultery, like all this just messed up stuff in the Bible and it's like, it all led to just one perfect person. It's like all this messed up stuff. It's like right in the middle was mm -hmm. just the tree. Literally, the tree, the tree. It's amazing. <clears throat> and I think it's, I think it's beautiful. 
Um, I mean, even from the beginning, we messed ourselves. Literally. It's, it was just over from the beginning. It's like... We had thorns since the beginning. Yeah. It's crazy. But, I don't know. I think that's... Yeah. I think we should just leave it on that beautiful note. I think so. Honestly. Um, you know, we have some more stuff, but we'll save it for next episode. And... Um, we really great combos today. That was oh great combos. Gosh. God was God was doing wow. his thing today. Um, and I appreciate all you guys for sticking. If you guys made it through this whole episode, we appreciate you guys. <laughs> no, a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. We talk a lot. Our, our, exactly. All over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, but we hope that there's a message that you can get out of it all. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, there's a snippet that you can take. It's like, okay, I learned something today. Yes. And whatever you're going through in your life, like, please reach out to us. If we can help in any way, uh, we'd love to. And if for some reason we miss a message or we just happen to not get you back in a timely manner, like, don't hate us for it. You know, we're we're humans too. (laughs) But, like, know that our heart is for you and for the Lord. And, um, And you know, we will help you. Yeah, and and we'll do everything we can. Yeah. So that's that. But... For some reason, I was just flipping through this. Like, I was literally just going through this, and then all of a sudden it opened to my favorite, one of my favorite books or chapters in the Bible. And so I'm going to read my favorite verses from it. And then, Noah, you want to close this out in prayer after? I'll close this out. Sounds good. So this is Psalm 37. Um, I was given it randomly uh, one day after after chapel. Um, I prayed to God, like, I just pray that you, you know, speak to me. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one of his people came up to me and was like, my favorite verse is this. And then I was like, whoa, and I read it and it became one of my favorites. But anyways, um, I don't know. I just have this feeling in my heart that I just need to share these words and that um, like there's a calling on this page for maybe one of you guys listening that I should just share this. And um, it's basically about God having your back. Like no matter what, how evil this world is, like God is fighting for you and you are one of his children and he will never let you fail. And so uh, the verses that really stick out to me is Psalm 37, verse 23, 24, and 31. So that's what I'll be reading from. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. So it's good. Like, just, just think of that. Truly think of that. Like read, if you, read it one more time, read it one more time. I got you. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him in his hand. The law of their God is in their hearts, and their feet do not slip. That's kind of like we were talking about, like be where your feet are at. Mm-hmm. God has your feet, be where they're at. 100%. And then just to delight in it. The because delight it has you there for a reason. But the comforting feeling too. Dude, we are wrapping this whole like, thing all together. This is amazing. This is coming full circle. This is actually so cool. It's wild. It is wild. And just the fact you open up to a random page, it was that. Like, dude, God is working. This is so cool. Literally. And just to think, like, the Lord has you in his hand. That the person who created the heavens and the earth, the father of the man who can tame the winds and the waves has you in his hands no matter what you go through even if you stumble you will never fall because he's lifting you up and so just know that because if you have god written on their heart on your heart your feet will never slip Mm. so keep that hope in the lord so Uh, i love it it's good Man, good little read. Good little read. All right. I'm going to close this out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord. It says in your in your word that when two or more gather in your name, that your presence is with us, Lord. So I just want to thank you for being here with us tonight, Lord. And just we know that your presence was felt, Lord, here tonight among everyone that was here. And I just hope and pray that someone out there, a listener, someone who just heard our words, that you spoke through us to them, Lord, and that you can reach the far, the lost, and the broken, Lord, that you can bring them home, Lord, and that heaven can yes. rejoice, mm-hmm. that we can all rejoice one day in your presence, Lord. And yes. 
I just thank you for all the blessings and the gifts that you've given to each and every one of us, Lord. And I just hope that we can use those that ultimately glorify you, whether that be in drawing, like Gabe said, or just taking that bold next step to reach people for you, Lord, that we can be fishers of men. And so in your mighty, glorious, and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I haven't had it. That's okay. Ah! That's it. Roll the credits. Dude. Oh my Amen. gosh.